Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and on today's episode, we are gonna be taking the brake calipers off the front of the car while the whole brake system's apart, and we're gonna repaint those. So, stay tuned. Today's episode is brought to you by you. That's right, every single episode created on Classic Mini DIY is made with the help of our patrons and our long-term part sponsor, 7 Mini Parts. If you want to see more mini stuff and more videos in the future, please consider supporting the channel on patreon.com forward slash classic mini DIY, or by checking out some of my awesome merch like t-shirts, stickers, and all sorts of other really cool stuff at merch.classicminidiy.com. All right. Let's get back to the episode. Like I said, on today's episode, we're gonna be tackling the front brakes of my car. Unfortunately, the brakes are in a rough state as of right now. Um, the anodizing got damaged at some point. Uh, I don't know if it was because of heat or if it was just a general wear and tear, um, but my mini sport brakes have finally started to look a little tired. Um, in a perfect world, I would probably pick up a new set of those uh, um, R-Line Mini Sport brakes that just got released, but I don't have the cash for that, and uh, I don't really need it right now. So um, we're going to hold off on that. Maybe that'll be a nice Christmas gift to myself. Um, we'll see. But for now, I want to make my old brakes, old brakes, look much nicer. So what I'm going to be doing in this episode is using a technique that I have seen on YouTube. I have no idea if it works, but... It is using oven cleaner, easy off in this case. Um, I'm not quite sure what the active ingredient is in this, but it does actually remove anodizing off of aluminum and metal parts. Now, I don't know if this is gonna damage them or screw them up or anything, so what I'm gonna be doing is fully disassembling the brake calipers themselves. I have uh, rubber seal rebuild kits that I purchased as well. That is gonna allow me to really get in, remove the anodizing off of everything, not have to worry about it, and then I can reassemble them after they're painted and uh, have a really nice rebuilt brake caliper. So first things first, let's get the brakes and uh, let's get this easy off and de-anodize them. Um, I'm not gonna show taking them off the car. I've done it a million times. So let's just jump right into de-anodizing. All right, so we've got the calipers off the car here. And as you can see, I'm setting them in my uh, like kind of catch pan here. Now, the first thing that we need to do is take this stuff apart. You can see they are really, really dirty. Um, they are still anodized, but the anodized coating has like burnt in some places and it just doesn't look as good as it used to. Um, so uh, we are gonna repaint these. And uh, to start off, let's get the pads out. Um, there's just a small cotter pin here that holds it in. And then we're gonna actually take the two pieces of the caliper apart. So we can dip this in the solution that is gonna remove the anodizing um, and we'll get these suckers cleaned up. Um, so let's get to it. Now these pads are actually in pretty good shape. I mean, they're just dirty, rusty right now. Um, I am probably gonna go ahead and replace these just while we have this all apart. So I'm not gonna fuss too much about making sure that the pads stay clean. If you are gonna reuse your pads, um, you need to make sure that you don't get grease or any sort of uh, material on them. If you do, they're gonna be completely fouled. So once the pads are out, the next step is to take the actual Allen keys loose here. Um, hopefully I can do this on this bench here go. Okay, so now you can see we've got the caliper disassembled. And you can also see there's a rubber seal on one side of the caliper. Um, this is what provides a seal between the two of these so that they can share fluid. And obviously two completely flat machined faces coming together like this create a perfect seal. Um, these brakes have seen better days. There is some notching and things in them, but it doesn't change the way that they operate. So no sense in replacing them. Um, the last thing that we're gonna do before these go into the solution is remove this piston here. Um, the four pots, as they're called, um, we're gonna remove these 
Um, and you're going to want to take care not to mar these up, but the easiest way to do it I've found is with a pair of needle nose pliers. All right, so there's your piston out. So we repeat the same process again um, with the other side and then this other brake. So I'm going to do that, um, but I'm going to spare you guys that piece. Okay, so the next step is the actual de-anodizing process. Um, so you can see I've got two just plastic containers here, which I'm going to spray this stuff into. A big heads up, the, the oven cleaner is kind of hazardous. You don't want to breathe in a lot of it. And uh, a regular face mask is not going to cut it. You really need a full respirator to make sure that you're not inhaling any of those chemicals. Um, so just keep that in mind. Also, wear some gloves. It's really important. Um, but next, we're going to just go ahead and spray these down completely with the oven cleaner. And we're going to let them sit for a little bit and see how, um, how well the anodizing comes off. All right, so unfortunately, um, the internet lied to me. I know, it's crazy. The internet never lies, and here we are, lied to. But the Easy Off did an okay job um, of at least starting the removal of the anodized coating. Um, it didn't really get it all off, or even really get most of it off. Um, let me show you guys here. It really didn't bring most of the anodized coating off at all. Um, if you get really close to it, you can see it actually started to spider it a little bit, um, which is helpful. However, it doesn't really help me. I need to get all of the anodized coating off before I try painting these. So in this case, good job Mini Sport. You guys anodize these in a way that is damn near impossible getting off with uh, household chemicals. But I'm gonna bring this to my machine shop. Um, they are already gonna to have to um, blast my block and do some other stuff. So I'm gonna have them go ahead and blast all of the anodized coating off of this. You can also get it off with a sand blaster or media blast, things like that. Um, but I was just hoping to do this at home and knock it out kind of quick. Um, one other thing you might not have seen is that the pistons themselves, the uh, actual pistons that we pulled out of the four pot brakes, these were not put in the easy off. It's not necessary at all to put these in there and remove the anodizing off these. Um, these have like a silver anodized coating and we wanna keep that because that's gonna protect these. And obviously these are never seen, they're inside the brakes. The other thing we didn't do are these really nice Allen key bolts. Um, I just brake cleaned these and just got all of the gunk off of them so they're nice and clean. But um, you can actually see, I took all of the seals out of the brakes and that is basically all the seals of the brakes themselves there's a couple of little tiny ones here um, as well as a whole bunch of big ones so so all of those are um, are what get replaced when you take these apart and you do a brake rebuild um, it's really simple you know you just pop these rubber seals out and then put the new ones in that's really it there's a flat one, a round one, and then teeny tiny little round ones that go in between the two pieces of the caliper. So I'm gonna get these over to the machine shop real quick, and uh, I guess let's fast forward time a little bit so you guys can skip all that stuff and see what they look like after they get blasted. So, three, two, one. All right, so now we have our brake calipers back from the sand blaster. Um, they blasted them really well. The anodizing came off a little bit. Um, it didn't come off quite as much as I'd hoped for, um, but I think this is gonna be etched enough for it to bond with the uh, actual brake paint that I purchased. So the brake paint that I got is from a company called G2. Um, it looked pretty good, um, not super expensive. It's an Amazon purchase. The link to that is in the description below, um, but it's pretty simple. This paint system is actually something that they say you can do with the brakes on the car. Um, personally, I had an opportunity to take them off since I'm not driving the car right now, and uh, it made more sense to do it this way. 
Um, you'll see that I've got some bolts in the feed lines for the brake fluid. Um, these bolts just happen to thread up and work perfectly, so they're gonna plug those holes. There are also two bleed holes right here. These I don't have a screw that fits into, um, but those also need to be taken care of when, uh, when you're painting all of this. You don't want you know, paint to go down into the actual braking system. I am gonna test a few more bolts. I'm hoping that I might be able to find one. Um, we'll see about that. But you can see they are pretty blasted um, and hazy. Now, the color that I'm gonna be going with is blue. Obviously, I've got a blue car. Um, I thought about red, I thought about gold, I thought about all sorts of different colors, but I decided that, that I'm just gonna stick with blue, try and match it to the engine. As far as painting these go, it's pretty simple. Um, this is an activator, so you pour this entire bottle of the activator into your paint here. You mix it up really, really good with this little included stir stick. Mix it up real good, wait five minutes, mix it again, and then apply it to the brakes. You'll want to wait 15 minutes in between each coat and aside from that that's basically it so uh, i'm going to do a coat on the outside of the calipers then i'm going to flip it over and i'm going to do the inside here as well um, you want to take extra care not to get it into these uh, actual cylinders these pots um, because they don't need paint inside them this is all going to have a piston in it and it's going to seal and you don't need it there um, you also don't want to paint these sides of your actual brake caliper. So before we get started, the last thing I'm going to do is mask these off. Um, so let's do that real quick. All right, so you can see all of these mating surfaces have now been masked off. Now the reason I did this is because when these calipers are finished, they go back together, something like that, and they need to be able to seal properly on that gasket face. Um, even though it uses some rubber rings in there to create a tight seal, um, I don't want to give it any reason to leak. Now, as far as painting goes, the first thing we're gonna do is paint this side. Um, we're gonna paint that side first so that when we are, you know, once it's done, we can flip it over, set it down like this, won't mess up any of the paint, and we can continue to paint the other side. We'll let it dry for 15 minutes, and then we'll come back and hit it with a second coat. Pretty straightforward stuff, um, so let's get started. All right, so after a little bit of irritation, you can see that first seal is in there. The round seals are actually much easier to put in. They literally will just kind of fall into place. They don't rely on being in a specific orientation since the round. You can see that went in like that. Um, but the, all that's left is to repeat that for the rest of these calipers. So let's go ahead and get those in in three, two, one. Wow, it's like magic 
really nice being able to use magic to put these seals in because having to put those in manually would have been not so fun. Now, as far as putting the pistons themselves in, don't forget, it's a little counterintuitive, but the open end needs to be facing out, not like this, like this. Well, I hope you guys were enjoying all of that. Unfortunately, uh, I started looking at the cylinders as I was starting to put the actual brake pistons into the calipers themselves and discovered that the inside of those cylinders is really badly etched. I tried to get a video for you guys, but I just couldn't get the detail to show you guys the damage. And when I was taking them off, they were a little bit wet, but I couldn't remember if it was when I was taking the lines off, if the brake fluid just dripped on the brake lines and the brake systems and everything. Um, and so, Unfortunately, what that means is I can't use those calipers. The paint finish was coming out really nice and I was actually really excited about putting them on. So unfortunately for my wallet, I had to pick this up instead. So that's right, I picked up a new set of the mini sport calipers, um, basically a direct replacement for what I had. Um, these are for 7.5 inch discs. It comes with new 7.5 inch discs. I chose these ones because it's what I had on the car already and it was the cheapest route for me to take while still maintaining really great performance. Um, I got these brakes almost nine years ago. I don't remember exactly how long ago. Um, and have driven the car with those brakes for ages, and they were great. I think the reason that debris got into those cylinders and got messed up was actually because of a faulty seal on the old caliper. I don't think it was actually a fault of the calipers themselves and more of the person maintaining them, um, which would be me in this case. So I decided to get these new ones. These new ones are 7.5s, like I mentioned before, direct replacements. So to wrap up this video, what we're gonna do, we're gonna head back out to the car and bolt these on, and that's gonna be pretty much it. Unfortunately, what that does mean is I am gonna have to disconnect the CV for the drive flange in the middle, um, which means that I'm gonna have to retorque my front wheel bearings, which is, uh, it's a tedious task, and especially when you don't have brakes and someone to hold them. So um, that should be a lot of fun. I'm not gonna cover that in a whole lot of detail though because I have already done that in two previous videos which should be popping up in the corner if you have any questions about that process. But let's jump back out to the car and bolt these suckers up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so this episode didn't really go to plan. Um, you know, it ended up being a just direct replacement for the brakes, which is not really what I wanted. Um, I would have liked to reuse those brakes so that, uh, you know, I could save a little bit of money, um, but didn't end up working out that way. So the old brakes gonna become wall art. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions about what I did in this episode, post them in the comment section below. 
Otherwise, I will see you guys on the next episode, and until then, enjoy those minis, and motor on. Thank you.